Hello and welcome to the T. Williams Micro Solution of the Week. Today we're going to discuss, as part of our Delegating for Success series that we have going on, we're going to discuss what's in it for me. When you're delegating, when you're asking people to do more work, especially in times like now where it's difficult to find more people, sometimes you have to ask others to do more work than they currently are, at least to bridge the gap between now and whenever it is that you can get more people in. So when you're doing that, one of the most important things to keep in mind is make sure you're providing them with the what's in it for me. What's in it for me? So that's basically the viewpoint of the individual taking on more work or taking on any kind of new task or any new endeavor at all. You know, what's in it for me? And we all ask ourselves this before we buy something, before we delve into doing something, sacrificing our time and our effort. You know, what are we going to get out of this? And even the most selfless of people go through that question mentally of what's in it for me, whether it's just because it's, it's going to swell their heart to make and make them feel good, um, provide them a bigger income, give them some other satisfaction in life. We all go through that what's in it for me analysis before we do something and sacrifice ourselves, our time and our efforts. When you think about what's in it for me, there's really two things you need to think about. One of them is motivation, the other one's inspiration. I know those are two very closely related terms, but think of motivation as um, more the, the mechanics of, you know, I do this and I get this. Things that motivate you, compel you to do something. Inspiration, very similar, but has a little more feeling to it, a little more emotion. And as, as people, we act more on emotion than we do on even the logic of things at times. So maybe not perfectly correct by definition, but I'm going to talk about, you know, when, when you're asking somebody to do more work or delegating tasks to somebody, make sure that you're motivating and inspiring. And here's a great way to inspire somebody. We'll start there. When you want to inspire somebody, you really need to share the bigger picture and the vision for them with them and include them in that bigger picture and that vision. You know, it's difficult to go to somebody and say, hey, I need you to put in a little more work because I have this dream house that I want to buy and I need you to work for me to get there. Not really going to inspire somebody to want to put effort in for you. In fact, it might do just the opposite. So including them in the big picture and the vision would be more like, hey, I, I want you to, you know, progress in your career and learn some new things, some new tasks that will down the road give you more ability to earn a bigger income or to have more job security, to move up in our company, whatever it may be. Make sure it's honest and, and, and things that are gonna actually, you're gonna be able to follow through on, but you wanna infuse those types of things into your conversations. Inspire people to act. You can't just ask them to do more, work harder, give up more time, put in more effort without them having a sense of what's in it for me. That's the stuff that really inspires somebody to act and, and act extraordinarily on your behalf. So get good at inspiring people, including them in your vision, and making sure that that, in, that vision includes them. Be genuine about it, follow through, and it's going to vary deeply with each business, but find ways to include them in the future vision of whatever it is you're trying to reach. That should inspire people to act, work a little harder, be a little more intrinsically motivated to do things. And then motivation. We all know what motivation is, and I'm just looking at the objective piece of motivation. So things like, you do this and this is your reward. These, these efforts will get these outcomes. Make them something that's very easy to understand, something that's reachable, you know, kind of like setting goals for an individual. So motivation might be something like, hey, if you work hard, you know, if, if I, know it's, I know it's a hard thing to do, I know we got, I'm asking you to do a lot of work here, but hey, on Friday, I tell you what, we'll cut out early. Or on Friday, we'll, we'll order pizza and we'll all celebrate our success for the week. Those are motivational factors. And they, there's a range of them, right? It could be um, bonuses. It could be increases in income, promotions, you know, things like that. More um, higher level motivational goals that people can reach. Or it could just be small things. Like I tell you what, if we, if we all work hard, we're going to, you know, like I said, take, a, take half a day on Friday or order pizza or you can wear jeans to work or you know move the take get rid of the dress code or allow people to come in more casual you'll be surprised at how far that goes 
it actually motivates people to do you know whatever it is that you're asking them to do a little bit harder and work just a little bit longer and put in more effort so find motivational factors things that can be very small if you'd like them to be they could be daily they could be weekly longer term if you'd like that but motivation is more you, know, you do these things and these are the outcomes that you're going to receive and motivation works really really well again it's going to vary greatly with each business that you know that that's out there but there's a lot of things you can do to motivate so motivation and inspiration those are the keys to just infusing that what's in it for me when it comes to asking somebody to do a little extra put in more effort more time whatever it may be and just remember you know the, the conversation can be super simple don't make it too difficult you know if you're asking somebody to do to take on something something simple like hey um I need you to do me a favor. I know, you're, I know you're super busy and you're doing a fantastic job. Is, it, is there any chance you have the ability to take on this extra task here, even just for the short term? And I tell you what, you know, I, I'll, I'll give you an extra vacation day or you know, we'll have a, a pizza in the office on Friday or something like that because I know you're going above and beyond. Really appreciate it. Um, do you think you can take this on? Nine times out of 10 people are gonna say, oh yeah, because you've hit on the things right away that are going to infuse some inspiration in them. You're going to make them feel good and you're going to give them some sort of motivational factor to do that. That's just a simple example. But too often you see where somebody comes and says, hey, I need you to um, do this, take on this project. Everybody else is really busy. I know you are too, but hey, we're all working hard here. You know, that, that's, just, that's just not a good way to go about it. You got to make sure you use some of those soft skills, some of the soft touch. It'll appeal to the emotional level of the individual, make them feel like they're important, make them feel like you value, value their time and their efforts and their talents. And if you do that, and you also give them a little bit of that, hey, if you do this, maybe we'll get um, you know, some kind of reward at the end. That works for everybody. We all, we all like that. We like to feel good, be inspired, be part of the story, and then know that we're gonna get some rewards in the end. So again, fairly simple. But when you're asking people to do more, this is a key element. What's in it for me? Also make sure you're keeping an eye on the what's in it for me for yourself. Because a lot of times we get a little bit overburdened, maybe buried in the, in the thick of things too much, and we, we lose sight of our longer term vision. What inspired us to do what we are doing today, why we work hard, why we sleep little, and why we just put all of our effort into our business. So make sure you're looking at what's in it for you as well. And that's something that you need to make sure you're feeding every day, whether it's you know, watching videos, listening to other successful people, looking at your, your goals and your vision, rewriting your goals, whatever it may be, that's gonna keep you focused on the long-term excitement and just that, that energy that brought you into doing whatever it is you're doing. Make sure you keep an eye on that because if you lose track of that, it's pretty tough to keep going. Now remember, even if you're in the thick of things and life is difficult, works hard, you're overworked, you're overburdened, you're tired, you're wore out, you have the control. It's you, so take it.